Good morning. It is Saturday. Saturday the something November. Time to go sailing. We have to get the boat ready to sail. After last night's shenanigans with the anchor dragging yet again, we slept slamly through the night. This morning, we need to get the boat ready to sail. So we'll release the jib track, open the sail bag, and then get on with sailing down through this archipelago. Time to head to somewhere called Ko Mac. Uh, we're in Ko Chang at the moment. We've got, I think, a 15 or 17 mile sail today, something like that. I think the island of Komak is going to be quite different to Ko Chang, so I'm looking forward to exploring. Can't wait to get going. And it's another beautiful day here in Thailand. Very lucky to be here. So the anchor held nicely overnight. I was up several times in the night, as was Nick. The boat's where we left it, so that's good. Just one thing, now that James has put that bar around the anchor box, so this can jam against that. This is the whole, this hook, yeah? There's literally just being put on by this. Yes. That explains why the strap comes off. Yes, this is meant to sit captive in here, yeah? Yeah. And it does. Well, we've got our answer to what the bottom is. That is covered in mud. All right, we're up. I'm Teresa, this is Nick, and this is Ruby Rose 2, our floating home. Join us as we settle into life on board our brand new catamaran, documenting our adventures and never shying away from the reality of boat life. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment because we love to hear from you and a big thanks to our community of patrons. So here I am again in my least sexy t-shirt bra and that's because I've just had to jump in the water again to rescue the boat hook again. And you can see that the conditions this time are far less uh, pleasant. We've got true wind speed of 24 knots, a current of just shy of 20. That just picked up a little bit. We've got this swell coming from behind now, thankfully. So it's all been a bit dramatic and exciting. And we're just saying one of the great ironies of having a YouTube channel is that whenever anything truly kind of frantic happens, you don't have time to pick up the camera. So you miss out, as in you, the audience misses out on um, some of the most hectic bits. I'm in my underwear and I went for a refreshing swim. All those years doing surf life saving when I was a teenager, they uh, they pay off when you're having to swim in this kind of chop. We're heading down the coast of Ko Chang. I'm cautiously optimistic that once we get kind of between the islands, the wind will just ease off a little bit. I have a theory that it kind of funnels down this coast. How's it, how are we going? 12. 12. Any sailor's day. Uh, engines off. Poodle along the coast at six knots. Uh, we should get some, um, yeah, hopefully some good sailing. We've got to be slightly aware when we're sailing down the coast, especially when you get to the end of a tip of an island, the wind changes direction and strengthens by normally five to ten knots. Uh, we've seen it time and time again. So um, just a top tip for I always use when I am sailing monohulls or otherwise the main sheet clutch off. The reason the clutch off is so I can dump it like super quickly. If we get a really big gust, just depower the main. If you've got the clutch on, can't do it. We have had between eight and twenty-six knots in the last ten minutes. How am I looking? I feel pretty windswept. Another good sail. We're doing fairly well recently, that's always encouraging. We're between the islands now, so we're just leaving Ko Chang behind and we're heading towards Ko Mak. There's some islands to pass on the way, but we can see the mainland from here, which is really nice. And I reckon that you can see the Cambodian border from here as well. It's really not far at all. And we've been having a little chat amongst ourselves and we're hoping we can actually do some cruising in Cambodia fairly soon. Holiday in Cambodia. Holiday? It's an album of that kind of this. Oh, right. So we're doing about seven and a half ish knots. I saw us doing about nine and a half before. Yeah, wind is uh, about 15 knots. We we're gusting up to about 20 before, so I think we'll do about nine and a half then. Apparent wind angle 83. We have our 
uh, speed log back. Mick went onto the pole and gave it a clean, but it's still not accurate. It says our boat speed or our speed through the water is 5.3, but our speed over ground is 6.7, 7.3, something like that. And we have about, let's see, how much further do we have to go? So we're obviously here. We're heading here. So we've got about 12 and a half miles to go and this will be our anchorage for the night. But if we zoom out, you can see the Cambodian border is that line here. So we're really close to Cambodia and there's some islands to be explored along the Cambodian coastline as well. So that would be really fun. Maybe we through two rocks, but we've got probably two knots. If you think you need to read, you should read. We're even down. Yep, good. That boom's mighty close to the through peg. That's looking pretty good. So we're still doing eight and a half, nine knots. I saw nine and a half before. So reefing down really doesn't affect the speed at all, to be honest. Um, we've got an apparent wind speed of 20 knots. Yeah, good decision. Right, who's the sand on vessel? It's them, because we're behind them, right? And also there to uh, when we're... But it, it is also courteous to not freak the other opposing, unless you're racing. If you're racing, in a racing, then you're catapulting shackles at the mainsail to kind of make them drop the sails. But in a situation like this, it is also courteous to uh, show the other boat that you have taken a clear and decisive change of course, which shows that you have acknowledged that. It's also why we wave at other boats. Because sometimes, you know, you do get these occasional boats that just like, they're having a bloody, you know, a baguette down below and some wine. Not, not that we're talking about French sailors. <laughs> well, actually, some of my greatest friends are French sailors. But the point about it is that, you know, you, they can't see us when a protected helm. So it is to wave at someone, they're like, okay, well, you obviously can see us. How's the sail looking? That looks great. Yeah. I went wrong with it. Ah. All right, we're here just about a few miles away from the anchorage. We need to go around an island and then kind of back on ourselves. But it's a pretty murky day, so yeah, we're not gonna be able to really see what's going on on the bottom. There are some shoals that extend out from the beach, so we're gonna to have to stay well clear of those. Um, but luckily, I thought about this in advance and I've actually got um, some a, a dropped pin on Google Maps on the satellite image where I think we should anchor. I kind of half rely on that, half rely on the charts and completely rely on our own two eyes. This will give us a chance to try something different with our anchor. We have decided that maybe we're not bedding it in enough when we are actually setting it, um, that we need to put a little bit more into the, the reversing and actually like fully bed it in. And hopefully that will do the job. So that's the latest theory. And I think we're not bedding it in enough because the um, hook on the bridle system is so difficult to do with and snaps off like very easily that we haven't really wanted to put it under pressure, but that's obviously completely the wrong approach because you know you need to test the anchor and the bridle, make sure that they're actually doing the job that they need to do. So yeah, we'll try that today and uh, fingers crossed. So we're trying to get to here, just between the 5 and the 10 metre contour line. We have the forward sonar on, just in case there was some obstacle that we can't see. And this is going to be our anchorage for the night. It is pretty beautiful here. We have an, uh, a metre of tide still to drop. All right, love. Okay. Tell, her when we, tell me when we're at zero. You ready? Meters out. That's what I want. We'll put them a little bit back. How much anchor chain? 27. Depth? 6.3. What have we got? 37. 
That'll do. And a bit for luck. You got her in neutral. Yeah, she's in neutral. So this is how it's going to work. I'm going to go back in reverse, 800 revs for say five seconds or until you yell. Only yell if there's a problem or if you see the chain come out, yeah? Okay. And once you've see, once you've yelled, come back and tell me what the yell was. <laughs> and then what we're going to do is we're really going to power rev it down, okay? Okay. Everyone's going to tell us to get those marriage saving headsets now. The bridle came up. The other thing to do obviously is to take a transit. It's not me taking a transit here. Once we're, alrighty. Swinging, obviously. They're not moving. Happy? Yep. When you're digging in, when you're trying to bed it in, yep. this just now, just because it's, it's, it's idiosyncratic to the boat, it went to like one knot in reverse. Yeah. But if you leave it, what you'll do is you'll feel the boat swinging yeah, anyway. Yeah. And yeah. then what it does is the elastic, it just pulls back on it. So the, the, the props are going around in reverse, yeah. but then it just goes back to point three. And at that point, I'm like, it's not going anywhere. Well, did you take a transit? No, be, no. I did. It, and? They're fine. Okay. <laughs> right, okay. Well, good job. Good job. Um, good morning. As for the for and green protocol, which is forever changing, but um, what we will do is we never leave the boat for an hour. No one will be able to hear you over that fresh water pump. Also known as the AK-47 in water pumps. Um, so yeah, we will leave, sit on the boat for an hour, put anchor lumps on, yada yada yada. What a lovely place. I feel like a bit, of a, a bit of a grandmother with my kind of like, like white green hat. Well. well, no, that's the beauty of it because it's got holes in it and wind just passes through. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. Yeah, it's got holes in it and wind so the idea is you obviously want to keep your dinghy off the jetty. Yep. Push back just to be a big push. Now that the dinghy was secure and our anchor was set, it was time to explore the island of Comac. All right, let's do this. Renting a motorbike was the only real way to explore the island and at only 200 baht, which is about five US dollars, it was certainly the cheapest. The island was a really interesting mix of high-end resorts and a very isolated and rural local population. While there are plenty of tourists around, this was certainly a much quieter island than its neighbours and for us that holds a certain charm. But there's also a little private island there with a jetty. That's right, so that's um, I think you pay to go ashore and when it's like clear the water apparently is beautiful, there's snorkeling there and beautiful beach. So yeah, that is a private island, but a nice one. So we're just checking out the other anchorage. The next time we come here, obviously you can see for yourself that today is not the day to be anchored on this side, but it's a very beautiful beach. So maybe, maybe one day the winds will be in a favorable direction and we can anchor out here, right out in front of the pineapple dessert bar. They've got a massage parlor on the beach. They've got a restaurant there. Beautiful banyan tree. Oh. You want to check on the boat? We're keeping a very close eye on the boat via the Sentinel app. Yay. Exactly where we left. <laughs> That's reassuring. It is reassuring. It's very reassuring. This app is like everything. It's how we found the boat when she'd like dragged at nine o'clock at night in the pitch black and 25, 30 knots and pissing rain. Yeah. Really. All right, let's carry on. The ride around the island was perhaps not a visually spectacular one, but it was certainly really relaxing and beautiful. Riding through all these coconut and rubber plantations gave us a bit of an insight into perhaps how the local population live. Apart from just enjoy the ride around the island, one thing we really wanted to do was find some provisions. We hadn't really had any luck finding certain things, for example bread. The prospect of a bakery was just not realistic. So imagine our surprise when that's exactly what we stumbled across. Oh, here we go. Freshly baked every day. What's that? Bakery. Looks like it's full of bread. You're kidding me. What other chances? <laughs> Can't believe we found like a proper bakery. Did not see that coming. This must be the only bakery between here and Pattaya. Time to go and have a little sunset beer. I don't think we'll be enjoying any sunsets tonight because it's very cloudy, which um, it hasn't been for the last little while. So anyway, nice and cool though, so I'm happy about it. 
Looking forward to an evening drink after a big day of sailing and exploring this beautiful island. So next week's episode we will be sailing to, I actually can't remember the name of the island, I'll put it on the screen below. It's only about 15 miles away and I'm excited about it, I'm hoping that we have some nice weather. Yeah. So thank you for watching this week's episode. Subscribe to our channel please and leave a comment down below and we'll see you next week. Cheers. Bye bye. Ha, ha, ha.